Thank you, Senator Lee. Senator Hirono. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for your strong support of LWCF. And as we focus on the implementation of LWCF, uh, let us not lose sight of the importance of land acquisition to this program. And I suppose since, since most of the land acquisition under this program is uh, through both federal, among federal, state, and private dollars to uh, pay for the acquisition, I say that if a state does not want to have its lands go for uh, public purposes because it wants to maintain a, a source of revenues for the state, then the state doesn't have to access the LWCA funds. So I do want to point out the importance of uh, LWCF funds in Hawaii. Uh, the benefits of this fund have provided uh, to Hawaii have been tremendous. Just last fall, the acquisition of the 2,882 acre Helemano Wilderness Recreation Area was completed thanks to a mixture of federal, state, and private dollars, including five million in funding from the Forest Legacy Program. Among the many benefits that conserving this land will provide include protecting habitat for endangered species such as the Hawaiian hoary bat, providing Oahu residents with new outdoor recreation opportunities, and protecting Central Oahu's aquifer. Also last April, I was fortunate to attend the blessing ceremony marking the sale of the McCandless Ranch to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to expand the Hakalau Forest National Wildlife Refuge on the island of Hawaii, made possible by the Hawaii Islands Forest at Risk Collaborative proposal. And when I spoke with the owner of the McCandless Ranch, he told me that the majority of the interested buyers of his property were loggers or developers, entities that would have ruined habitat that was the last location for the endangered alala or crow seen in the wild. Some critics of the Land and Water Conservation Fund point out how expensive the federal land acquisition are, acquisitions are and argue that the money would be better spent going to other needs such as maintenance. That's what we've been hearing this morning. However, we cannot ignore the cost of inaction, like what the cost would be of losing the McCandless Ranch land to a developer or a logger. So Mr. O'Mara, I appreciate that in your testimony you discussed the important contributions of a LWCA, LWCF fund uh, to protect wildlife, drinking water, and increasing community resilience. Can you discuss the urgency with acquiring some of these lands and the costs of inaction if Congress were to stop funding land acquisitions? Can you just briefly go over yeah. some of those concerns? Sure, and given the, the kind of rapid increase in land values in places like Hawaii around the country, I mean, every year we delay, it just becomes more expensive. And, you're and especially seeing, land in Hawaii is very expensive. Very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think, you know, you increasingly see federal agencies that are focused strategically on inholdings and properties that, you know, kind of help complete parks, improve management, connect, connect ecosystems. Um, but, I mean, if we had fully funded the program at the 900 level starting in 1978 for the full time, um, a lot of the parcels that we're going back to acquire today for either access or other things mm -hmm. could have been purchased at a fraction of the cost. I mean, you think about places in Montana and Idaho, you know, today that are much more expensive than they would have been before. And again, it's not to own, you know, it's, it's, it's being very strategic about which ones make the most sense with a collaborative process. But it has been, it has been kind of penny wise and pound foolish if we're trying to build a comprehensive rec recreation system across the country. And it's not as though the land acquisition process is a short process. As Mr. French noted, there are something like seven uh, criteria, factors that go into whether or not uh, the, the, that we're going to seek that kind of land acquisition, not to mention it requires a willing seller. We're not forcing anybody to sell the land to the federal government. And I'm kind of uh, astounded, Ms. Combs, that uh, the Interior Department did not request any money for LWCF funds. That was your testimony, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So we all recognize on this committee that there is a tremendous backlog on maintenance, 16 billion or so. But what I don't understand is why we should pick one or the other. Wouldn't you support both? Wouldn't you support LWCA funding as well as this new fund that you're proposing to address the backlog problem? The department does support both. Uh, Secretary Bernhardt testified he very much supports the land and water conservation. Then why would you request zero funding for LWCF? We are going to um, be sure that we uh, take care of the president's budget and his priorities were um, the backlog and deferred maintenance, and that was our number one priority in our budget, Senator. 
So you've made it very clear that LWCA funding is not a number one priority, even as the president continues to ask for billions of dollars for a wall. I think it's very clear what the priorities of this administration are. Thank you, Madam Chairman.